New sexual health curriculum in Battleground draws criticism just over two weeks before the election and the debates are underway. And we take you on a tour of Clark County pumpkin patches. Those stories and more on today's edition of the Week in Review from ClarkCountyToday.com. Hey everyone, happy Friday. I'm Chris Brown. We start in Battleground where approximately 150 people crowded into the room Monday night to give the school board a piece of their mind over proposed new comprehensive sexual health curriculum. This curriculum, I firmly believe, is not safe for children. There are certain things that I can't go into the detail of. I, I don't know the ages of all the children that are sitting in this room, but the rather explicit material in this information is not appropriate for children. I have five children in the school district, ranging from a second grader to an 11th grader, and I would prefer that they get information like this from their teachers rather than the back of the bus, the cafeteria, their peers, or other um, social media or other media. And when I heard about it, I was like, are you kidding me? This is what's going to be taught to a high schooler? I'm sorry, but my high schoolers, and many are, not ready for this information. They do not have the capacity to, to process it properly. You should know that LGBTQ students, they get bullied, harassed, physically assaulted at an astonishing rate. 80% of people who identify with that get bullied, and some physically assaulted. It is not okay. There is so many studies right now the most recent one was all over the nation that said that with gender inclusive curriculum that gets cut by crazy numbers. This is the second go round for the new CSE curriculum after the first attempt was also met with community pushback. The district surveyed over 2000 people and had their curriculum committee comb through 10 different lesson plans to put together a customized three week program consisting of seven units they hoped would alleviate the concerns of many in the community. Um, we recognize this is sensitive and complex. Um, we're never going to have full agreement on this. Um, there, you know, we tried to respect the law. We tried to do our best to get community input. Um, we have um, tried to keep like the, what is best for all kids front and center. Um, and, and, and the reality is, is that the bulk of this work, I mean, it was really done by the teachers of this school district. Despite voicing some of their own concerns, the board approved the first reading of the curriculum four to one with Tina Lambert as the lone no vote. Well, I feel like we work for the community as board directors, and I think we've heard them loud and clear. Perhaps if we do what they ask, they would respond by voting in favor of our bonds and levies. The board will revisit the CSE curriculum at their next meeting on October 28th and could approve it at that time. It should be noted that parents can opt their students out of any or all of the seven units in the lesson plan. A lot of the same people who showed up in Battleground this week were at the Vancouver Community Library last Friday to hear a panel of seven people talk about the controversial Drag Queen Story Hour events. The panel included a drag queen, a drag king, a Unitarian reverend, a gay rights activist, a librarian, a parent, and a therapist who worked with LGBTQ youth. Now, opponents of the story hour were upset that no negative views of the events were presented. They plan to hold their own forum sometime in February. In his editorial this week, Clark County Today editor Ken Vance addressed what resonates the most with him regarding the issues surrounding the Drag Queen Story Hours being hosted by the Fort Vancouver Regional Library and the flash sexual education curriculum that appears ready to be adopted by the Battleground School District. What troubles Vance is that it is his perspective that each situation has not been a response to natural issues raised organically by children. Rather, Vance points out each situation is an attempt by adults to promote agendas involving gender identity and sexuality, initiating the concepts to children who are unprepared for such adult-themed topics. Now, we realize most of you are passionate about your own views on these subjects, and we appreciate those of you who have participated in the conversation with us. We welcome the rest of you to join in by following us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. You can view the entire Drag Queen Story Hour panel on your own time there. 
Well, Ridgefield City Council and the Port Commissioner candidates participated in a moderated public forum at the end of last week. The community event was a packed house at the Clark County Fire and Rescue Station 21 with questions focusing on development, rapid growth, and affordable housing. It was inevitable, okay? You, you, you look at Clark, Clark County, how much it, it, it has grown. I view it as a balloon. It all went East County. It filled up, you squeeze that, the balloon had to come up up north. The people on the end, the seniors that are getting taxed out of the homes that they spent their entire lives trying to pay for and trying to have a place to where they could live out their days peacefully, they're being taken away from them because prices are going up. As we grow further into <clears throat> into other communities, I, I personally like to see uh, lower density growth. Um, a lot of complaints I hear of uh, you know, parking in the neighborhood streets. Some of these demands that these new developments are putting on, they're tapping the existing systems and they're putting a strain on it. And we need to be mindful of that. Again, downtown, uh, trying to keep, get a few more businesses down there, keep people coming down there, um, make it like the Main, Main Street Association and the city are trying to make downtown. There isn't too much we can do with how fast it's going. Like it's been said before, we have to just make sure we have a really good plan in place. We have to make sure that we design the city we want. I'm looking for a one level, small home with a small yard with maybe shared resources. We don't have that in Ridgefield. I know that the port has a plan and the city has a plan. I've seen the growth of the city's plan and it's a, I think it's a good plan. It's been developed a long time. We gotta make sure that it's a Ridgefield plan stays that. And it is a Ridgefield plan. We also attended a League of Women Voters candidate forum this week in Battleground and heard from candidates for city council there. The city is dealing with explosive growth and budgeting issues that have them seeking to annex into Fire District 3 to free up revenue. Candidates talked about their views on growth, the city's roadmap project, and dealing with the impact of climate change. Watch for the full write-up at ClarkCountyToday.com and follow us for more in-depth election preview coverage with just over two weeks to go until the general election. Speaking of, we are participating with Lacamas Magazine to put on a Camus mayoral debate next week. The event will take place Tuesday, October 22nd from 6.30 to 8 p.m. at the Grass Valley Fire Station in Camus. Now, originally, Camus Mayor Shannon Turk was unopposed in the upcoming election, but now two write-in candidates are jumping into the race. Current City Council member Melissa Smith and Camus resident Barry McDonald have each announced their candidacy for the position. All three candidates have been invited to the debate. Now, the public is invited to attend and also to send prospective questions to event organizers via email, admin at lacamasmagazine.com. Well, we're more than halfway through October and fall has officially ushered in the season of harvest and autumnal activities. Chief among them is the pumpkin patch. We are visiting patches all over the county to give you a taste of what these local farms have for you to enjoy. From hay rides to corn mazes and pumpkin slingshots, that sounds like fun, to home style farm stores. Each patch is unique and we hope you find one you and your family can enjoy. Check out our video tours of the Vancouver pumpkin patch in East County and the patch in Woodland up now. With several more still to come, stay tuned and stay up to date by checking out our Facebook videos and stories at ClarkCountyToday.com. Now time to check in with a man who still believes in the great pumpkin, Paul Valencia. You better believe I believe. Of course I believe in the great pumpkin. The great pumpkin is silver and black though, just so you know. Hey, happy Friday everybody. In sports this week, we did football notes on all the teams from Southwest Washington. Battleground. Wow, Stephen Hancock. I still can't believe it. 350 some odd yards rushing last week, six touchdowns. We recapped his incredible day, and we also named a lot of the guys who blocked for him. Stephen Hancock would be the first to tell you, a running back cannot run for that many yards alone. He had a lot of help with the Tigers. We also did a little story on Hawkinson. The Hawks are getting a game this week. All year, week seven was just a buy, an open date. Well, a few weeks ago, they found an opponent. Hawkinson will be playing Kelso tonight. And I hope everyone's getting a chance to see ClarkCountyToday.com on Mondays. Every Monday, we do a Monday sports update. It's me narrating highlights from the previous weekend's football game and just giving a recap of sports in Clark County. 
Our videographer, Mike Schultz, he's on the sidelines of these games, rain or shine, and he's getting some great, great looks. You should check it out every Monday, Monday Sports Update. Thanks, Paul. There's your quick check of the top stories this week at ClarkCountyToday.com. Just a reminder, if you're looking for ideas of what to do this weekend, you can always find a full list of community events on our calendar at ClarkCountyToday.com. And if you know of an event that's not included, you can add them yourself. All right. For all of us at Clark County Today, I'm Chris Brown. Thank you so much for watching. Have a terrific weekend. We'll talk to you next week.